This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to take a quick look at the Motorola Zoom. This is the original Zoom, the first ever Android 10-inch honeycomb tablet, now running Ice Cream Sandwich. Now, though this may be the, the longest-lasting tablet on the market when it comes to Android tablets, it was the second actually to get the Ice Cream Sandwich upgrade. First, there was the Asus ePad Transformer Prime, and this followed quickly afterward. Now you can also get the Acer Iconia A200 10-inch Android honeycomb tablet we reviewed and upgrade that to ICS and the original ASUS ePad Transformer is just now starting to get its ice cream sandwich. But for those of you who have a Motorola Zoom and haven't upgraded yet, or more so those of you looking at discounted tablets in the stores or maybe buying something used off eBay and Craigslist and you want to see how it runs ICS and what it looks like, we're going to show you now. So just to give you a little recap for those of you who are looking just now at, at budget priced tablets, this guy was the first Android tablet, 10.1 inch display, standard LCD display, pretty sharp, pretty good, not super duper wide viewing angles and all that kind of thing. 10.1 inches, 1280 by 800 pixels. It has a 1 gigahertz NVIDIA dual core CPU, this the Tegra 2, that's pretty much what you found in every Android 10 inch tablet back in 2011. It has a gig of RAM and it's available with 16 gigs of storage and with 32 gigs as well has front and rear cameras, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. It's a full Android tablet. And it runs vanilla Google OS. That means there's no customizations. There's no HTC Sense going on, no Samsung TouchWiz. This one was the development platform for Android tablets. And so straight from Google, you've got just ba the basic OS. Nothing else to add on. Which means it's pretty quick and pretty clean. But also, some things are less than exciting. For example, look at that wallpaper. Not exactly stunning, is it? Now, with ICS, you can still press and hold and choose wallpapers, and look at that selection. Wow. These are some pretty mostly dreary, and that's a little bit interesting, wallpapers. So with the vanilla Android, that gives you a good performance. There's a few drawbacks here. You're going to have to go out and hunt some really nice-looking wallpapers, unless you're just thrilled with something that they offer here, which, as you can tell, I am not so much. And then you can set the wallpaper. And there you have it. So widgets are also pretty much just your stock Android widgets. There's no manufacturer widgets here. This is actually a little analog clock. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see when I drag it around, there it is. You've got your multi-page home screen, and that in spirit has not changed much from Honeycomb. You can pick up anything you want and move it around. It'll sometimes offer you a grid to help you with super tidy alignment. And speed is very good overall. What's so new here? We have our lovely list of applications running right here. We can go through all of these, and if you don't want to see that one in there in the list anymore, we can just swipe it away, like so. And to get to applications, as always, you tap this little icon over here, and here's my grid of applications. Now, if I sideswipe, I can get over to widgets. You can see here's apps, here's widgets. That's new for ICS. And here's my selection of available widgets. And say I want to put one of these on the desktop. Grab that, and then it's going to let me pick whatever screen I want to put it on. Just plop it down. I've got a little grid that shows me for alignment purposes. So here's our lovely bookmark widget now. And I tapped on the bookmarks. It takes me right there. You can see browser load times are very good. Adobe Flash is available for ICS. When ICS first came out on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus smartphone, that was the first device to have ICS. It wasn't available, but now, yes, it is. So you get full Adobe Flash. And this is a full web page here. You can see we have just fine scrolling speeds, pinch zooming. Definitely improved over Honeycomb on the Motorola Zoom. So good stuff there. The Contacts application has been replaced by the People app. It's still the same thing in Spirit, and this is what it looks like. And if we had some photo caller IDs, they would show up here instead of the generic little laughy smiley face. Like there we've got somebody showing up. And pretty straightforward layout and controls are pretty good. You got your edit stuff, your search, and all that stuff is available, so it's pleasant enough to use now. Notifications are now more bulleted out, which is nice. So you can see I've got something right here to tell me, and that's separate from the controls. And the control panel looks a little bit different, but you've got quick shortcuts to a variety of basic settings here. It's handy airplane mode, Wi Fi, screen rotation, brightness, notifications, and the full settings palette is here. And new now is developer options for ICS. So you've got a bunch of stuff here 
for you geekier people who really want to control stuff. You've got a lot of options now. Menus have also been reorganized for Honeycomb. That was one of the criticisms of Android, that you could have menu controls down here or up here. Now they're up here. Pretty straightforward. And if we take a look at our browser settings, we've got some new stuff too. We've got bandwidth management here, and under advanced we've got And here, one nice thing that's right available at the root level of the menu, you can see Request Desktop Site with a checkbox. So no more having to type things in the URL bar that works only until you reboot the tablet to force it into desktop mode. Now if you don't want to see WAP sites designed for mobile phones, you can do it pretty easily. And here you can see we're testing it out. We've checked the load desktop site version and we've got the full New York Times being served to us instead of the mobile version. Complete with Flash and all sorts of other good stuff. Embedded video playback works fine. As always, the Zoom has pretty good sound, as you can hear. If you think it's bad enough watching people walk or drive with their eyes glued to their smartphones... Another thing that's new is you can actually delete applications right here from your app drawer. You don't have to go into Settings, Applications, and remove them that way. For example, we have AT&T Barcode Scanner here, which certainly doesn't belong on this device. It's not an AT&T device, but it got installed as part of my account restore when I set up the device. So if I want to get rid of it, I just press and hold on it and choose Uninstall. And it says, it's going to be uninstalled. So if you do that by accident, don't worry. It does ask you for confirmation first. And I said, OK. And it is gone. Nice and easy. So what's not here from ICS on smartphones, there's no facial unlock feature on the tablets. But other than that, you've got pretty much the same stuff. And really, as you can see, if you've been using Android tablets before, the changes from Honeycomb to ICS are really a lot more subtle than they were for the phone. The phone UI in Gingerbread was certainly quite different, but this ICS is really more of an evolution and improvement of Honeycomb, and definitely some nice touches. In terms of benchmark numbers, the zoom didn't change really. In fact, it went down a little bit, and we've seen that with a couple of tablets so far, that ICS numbers with uh, Quadrant and other tests really are just a little bit slightly lower, but experiential performance, performance feels faster. As you can see, this guy just moves beautifully, and, and we've got several apps running here right now. No problem. Runs very well. So that's Android OS 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich running on the Motorola Zoom. That's a free downloadable update for anybody who has a Motorola Zoom. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the Motorola Zoom and all sorts of other cool Android tablets.